Hello everyone, welcome back again. In today's story, I'll be learning about arrays in Julia. So what is an array? An array is a collection of elements and it's usually used to build lists, vectors, matrices and then tables. Okay, so let's see what, how we can do an array. For example, we have an array of, let's see, first array. Right, our first array. It can be of one data type like numbers. Right, there's going to be an array of integers and it's having five elements. So all the number one, three, two, five, these are the five elements. It's of one data type. I can also do it like let's say second array. Second, our second array is going to be of strings. So it's going to be like it can be of strength like this. And then let's say is right. So this this is so this is going to be also an array, but it's going to be an array of strings with two elements. So let's check it again. So in case I check type of this, when it tell me that it's a vector, the reason is that arrays are used for building vectors. So if I check first array, first array, it's going to tell me that what is a vector of integer. The same thing that the other one is going to tell me type of second it's also going to tell me that it is what a vector of strings so that is the main concept about building arrays so this is a one-dimensional array so let's see how we can build a two-dimensional array so for example we have two dimensional two dimension right once you build a two-dimensional array you you have to omit the commas these commas the moment you bring the commas it's a one-dimensional array so let's say it's going to be like this so this is a two-dimensional array of five elements so you see that it's an array of made up of integers and it's having two this two is for the di dimension and this is one row and then five elements you can also add more stuff to it by putting let me copy it and paste it i'm copying it and paste it right it is going to be still two dimension but it's going to be two dimension two with two two rows you have to be careful of the numbers that in the same it matches up so this is going to be two dimension arrows of two rows that is telling me that is what two dimensions so the first row the second row and all of them are two dimensions i can add more to it and make it like this let me put a certain value Mm -hmm. so let me copy the same thing and paste it right it was two let me make this one into a something simple that we can run it forever so let's say it's going to be tables table one right table one not tables one okay table one and then table one is going to be of can put it like four arrays four rows let's add the number and number to it close this and then z1 mm -hmm. right so if i check it it's going to tell me that it is what an array of five dimensions so it's going to tell me that's an array of what five dimensions or five elements and it's two dimension and it's having four rules row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4 and then it's having what 5 elements so 20 elements so that is it so let's see what you can do with this if you want to count it it goes from top to down so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so if I want to pick this number 5 I'll go with table as the indexing or splicing and then what 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right 5 straight away going to print to me 2 right again if i want to count from 1 to 19 i'll just go again with table 1 right and i'll go with 1 to 19 and it's going to print all of them perfectly for us from 1 to the 19th element so that is the concept about indexing in array in arrays let's see some other things we can also do with this Mm, sorry one of the things you can also do with this is 
let me go back again with table one right okay one of the things you can also do with this is in this format you can also check based on the row for example if i want to check based on the row we can use this format of let's say table one right and then let's say this is the first first row first column so if you bring it like this this comma here is talking about only the columns so like this and then the, the column will follow so if i want this maybe this column this is the first row i want this fifth i want to print all of these things in this third row third column i'll go with three like this and it's going to print all of them for us so that has printed all of them in this third row so if i want to go to the fifth i'll do the same thing and it's going to print all of them for us which is what the fifth one one so that is the concept about printing based on the colon another way you can also do it is you can also check for the row and then the colon using the format of this which we did here right or using another format like this for example let's go table let me close this table table one and then you go with two right and then let's say i want to check this is the second row two and then three but don't forget this one then when you do it like this it's going to be the second second row right this is the second row and then the third column so second row of the third column second row of the third column so we're going to print what five five so this format is the row and then the column this one is the column it's going to print all the column for you so this is the main concept about this and then you can also follow for with the normal one we all know is let's say uh, two and then three is also going to print perfectly for us two and then three which is not this two and three but it's going to print based on starting from two and three so one two three so that is the concept about let me change it so that you can see the difference table guys <laughs> table one right let me make it like four so one two three four five six so one one two is two six I'm going to print it perfectly for us so we'll see that it's going to print all up to the six elements okay so that is a concept about indexing or splicing in julia concern aris let's see some other things you can also do with it you can also do range for example if i have a range like a there's also one thing that you can also do with this you can also assign a value to it for example if i have a value like let's say e right and i assign a number to it like four i can put this value as my mm, let me stick here because of the because of the omission of this that's why it's giving me the l okay i can put this value right four i can put this value inside here so instead of table table one i'll just instead of putting the four here i can just go with the e and then it's going to also work perfectly for me which is one based on this one that we did okay so that's the concept about it so let's see what some other things we can also do with it we can also check for a range for example i have a value like a is called to range and then as we already done you can also use range to build arrays like one is to 20 right it's going to build a range for me of 1 to 20 so i can use collect to build an array from this range so one then is to 20 you put this 20 here this format they're going to perfectly work for me which is going to build from 1 to 20 for us so this is one of the concepts there's also another way you can also build an array using this collect using this plot operator the splat operator so for the splat operator it's going to be like this let's say it's going to be and you put the number here 20 right and then you bring the splat which is triple points or triple full stops which is the same thing so if i check like collect so i'm supposed to check like this sorry for these things collect and one 
1 is to 20 right and I check same format like this 1 20 you need to tell me that it is true because it's actually true so that is the concept about using splat method but it's recommended that you use the collect method for most of your cases there's one last thing too you can also do called line space and also use line space to construct a range starting from a certain number and then to a certain end and then to build different steps or elements so for example if i this same thing i can build like one right and then 20 this is my start this is my stop now i want to build let's say 13 elements so 13 it's going to build it perfectly for us having 13 elements so that's going to perfectly build it for us that's quite nice concerning line space you can even use these together you can use the collect range together to build a range and then collect it into an array so collect and then we have range right then you have the number like uh, 1 is to 30 so it's going to actually build it perfectly so let's put it into a variable like h so that we can print it it's actually going to build this range see that it's perfectly taking the range and build an array for it so if i check like type of h will tell me that what it is a vector just like as we learned of it and then we can actually print h and then it's going to print all the values for us perfectly but then all of them one thing you can also do is you can also use step you can also use step to check for step with the line space so let me print this again copy let me copy this okay for example if i have this value right i can use the step to stepwise like to step it perfectly and it's going to count the number of steps it's going to take for this so if i put it into this bracket like step step right step is an inbuilt function and then this is going to count the number of steps it's going to take for me so each and every of them so 1.5 that is the difference in each and of the numbers that is going to be making here which was this one which we built so that is the concept about this so thank you for watching i know that it's quite a long tutorial but i know that you have learned something then Please, if you have any question or contribution, you can put it inside the se uh, comment section so that everybody can benefit. Then, thanks again for watching and stay blessed.